Hello everyone and welcome back to Realism Over All Sandbox in Kerbal Space Program 1.8.1. In a previous video I explored the idea of an Apollo direct lunar landing, a lunar landing with just the command and service module instead of a separate lunar lander, and that required a very large rocket, the Nerva. And in the comments Pekka asked about an Orion direct lunar landing, landing the Orion command module on the surface of the moon, and I wasn't thrilled with that idea. Uh, mainly that is because Orion is much heavier than Apollo. Uh, Apollo, without the, I think, I forget if it's with or without the heat shield, but it's around 5.5 to 6 tons, whereas Orion is uh, 9.5 to 10.5 tons, depending on the estimate. We were at about 10.2 uh, with the docking port, heat shield, and everything. Uh, it says 9.7, but I think that's uh, disregarding something or another. And uh, maybe uh, internal fuel. Uh, for the RCS. So, also in a previous video, I had the NTR service module, the NASA Nuclear Thermal Propulsion Architecture and uh, its engine. So this is a nuclear service module, but this does not seem like a good idea for landing on the moon because it's so tall. But then again, we are in the world of really tall landers now, apparently. Uh, so, we could uh, take some Falcon landing gear. I mean, I, I would want something oh, that's a little bit too small. Honestly, I I'd, I'd, I'd be in favor of something very sturdy like this, given my propensity for tipping over. And, you know, conceivably, but we have a few problems here. Uh, first of all, the thrust weight ratio of this is 0.19. We could put another engine, but that will just hurt the Delta V even more. Uh, 0.19 is uh, not enough for a safe landing on the moon. It's just above lunar gravity, 1.13. So we need more margin than that on our thrust weight ratio when landing on the moon. And this would have to do the entire descent burn and landing given its delta V and mass, 60 tons. It's not super efficient given the dry mass of the tank. And so it's not really the best option. But is there an off the shelf option that would work without you know designing a new service module from scratch well let's see my preferred option is actually this if we have to land orion on the moon this would probably be the best arrangement this is a blue origin ilv descent stage this is the one that was supposed to be on their proposal but it doesn't have quite enough fuel for me on its own, its delta V will be 2,500. I've added a supplementary tank of hydrogen and oxygen here to bring it up to closer to 3,100. So this is two BE-7 engines. It'll get a thrust weight ratio of 0.28, which is uh, not quite double lunar gravity, but it's close. And uh, this is just a uh, fairing here, and we've got solar panels. I got the solar panels from the MBC mod, the Mars Base Camp mod, and I'm using also this a CEV tank from the same mod, and I configured it for realism overhaul. Its dry mass is 1.429 tons and wet mass 32 tons. This matches the balloon tank, and basically, uh, so the procedural balloon tank, and this is basically imitating a Centaur stage, a dual engine Centaur. So. We've got a slightly heavy dual engine Centaur, and we have a engine here that gets 460 seconds of ISP. It's basically two RL10s. So it's basically Hydrolox all the way. It's all hydrogen and oxygen. And as a result, it's lighter than the Apollo option because remember with Apollo, the service module was hypergolic and used uh, Arizine and NTO, which is not as efficient as hydrogen and oxygen. So the Apollo option, the total mass with this, what we have to send to the moon, this is what we have to send to the moon, is was 75 tons, whereas this is only 62. However, 62 is still more than what SLS can send to the moon. So we're in a bit of a pickle there. But basically our Delta V budget here is uh, this stage down here handles the capture around the moon and then the descent burn until the very end of the descent burn, which is what this does. This does the final bit of the descent burn, then the ascent burn, and the return burn to Earth. So it does all that business. And for that, it's all pretty good. Uh, we have more than enough. 
And notice that the total mass here, 62 tons, is only a little bit more than the nuclear stage. But this actually gets more delta V. The nuclear stage was at 5,000 something. And here is one of those cases where, again, the ISP of the nuclear engine is very good. It's 800. But the dry mass of the system is so heavy that it ends up being the case that hydrogen and oxygen is better. So that happens. And you really have to weigh carefully whether the nuclear stage is the best idea or not. And for landing, it's generally not because the engine mass tends to be too heavy, right? Here we get the, we have a certain thrust requirement in order to land. And we get that thrust better with the chemical engines instead of the heavier nuclear engines. It, but is this the only option? I thought about one other option off the shelf again. Uh, so let's just set that aside. What if we just put uh, Centaur V or Centaur X, uh, whatever you want to call it. I mean, it's a Centaur V these days, but I like to call it Centaur X just for the heck of it. Um, so Vulcan Centaur, not the old-fashioned Centaur. The good thing about the Vulcan Centaur is that it has basically the same diameter as Orion. We can adjust the procedural fairing. And so it fits very well on it. And we can, we could get those engines. Those are actually better than my engines. I have my own RL-10s that I use, but those from the Mars Base Camp pack by Lonesome Robots is, uh, I like those better. But anyway, I'll put these for now. So what we have here, it has a lot of Delta V. So yeah, I, I wasn't expecting that much, but it seems to have that. Okay, it is a much heavier stage than either of those. And our total mass is now 71 tons, which is heavier. But it gets a little bit more delta V. and uh, But it is taller than the landing portion of this. But it's all in one stage. So that simplifies things. Fewer engines. And so you could put the landing legs on. And maybe it would work out. So... That is another option that I contemplated, and it wouldn't necessarily be a bad option. It's still shorter than the nuclear version, and but we'll have to have landing legs. That'll probably cut into the Delta V, and ultimately uh, this two-stager option uh, is more efficient and requires less of a launcher. Now, with the launchers, somebody had suggested just putting it in Starship, but the problem with Starship is you have to send a lot of launches to refuel it, right? Uh, you could imagine doing Starship with this. Let's bring out a Starship just for size reference. Well, you can see people think Starship is big, but it's actually not going to fit. <laughs> yeah, uh, if we tuck the engines in, uh, change the form factor a bit, it could work. But this one on this side can't. It won't fit inside. Uh, Starship is big. But it's not, it's not infinitely big. <laughs> it's, it's, uh, it has its limitations. So maybe, maybe the bulkhead up here is uh, a little bit high. Maybe that's moved back a little bit. And actually, it probably can't plop out of there unless the top hatch is even wider. But anyway, uh, I think we are going to build around uh, this model, the two-stager. Yeah, because it has the lowest launch requirements, and we'll see what we can do. Our most obvious option is to beef up SLS in some way. It doesn't have the payload capacity to send this to the moon right now. It has a sort of listed capacity with Block 1B to send uh, 37 tons to the moon or something like that, but we need somewhat more than that. But it's not entirely obvious from our Delta V figures exactly how far short we are. So we might just want to test it out. On the other hand, well, I mean, we can see that there's 8,300 here, and then the Block 1B, the the EUS uh, stage, has about enough to transfer to the moon, and maybe 200 to complete orbit, but I think 8,300 is just not enough. But it's not as far off as we might initially think it is, right? You would think that it would be way far off, but it is not that way far off. So what if we just replace this with a nuclear stage? Because <laughs> unfortunately, I don't have my Kasei rocket in this install, which actually has an 8.4 meter hydrogen tank. 
so we'll just use a procedural tank for now. Or, even better, uh, why don't we just use the liquid hydrogen tanks from EUS? Let's say we put two of them together and put a fairing in between. That should take care of the business. Uh, they're heavy enough. <laughs> they're certainly not being light. Uh, so, yeah, maybe we can do something like that, as painful as that looks. It seems like we're not going to have quite enough with just two tanks, which is a pickle. Uh, we'll remove the launch escape system for now. The fairings might be a little bit heavy. They're eight tons. Uh, I wonder if... Well, no, their density doesn't seem to change their delta V very much. I think we're going to have to go with a third tank. All liquid hydrogen. Now we have the delta V. Okay. Well, that gives us a 128 ton stack here, and we have to put some structure in yet. Uh, this, the EUS, was 173 tons. So here, well, it could work. But let's pretend, because this is a mess. Let's just pretend that we're stacking three of these together and make a procedural tank out of it instead of <laughs> doing this in this haphazard way. So conceptually, because we want off-the-shelf parts, we are putting three of these hydrogen tanks together and they could do that. And, well, I, I wanted to say it wouldn't cost that much, but... Um, it turns out that using off-the-shelf parts for stuff is not as cheap as it ought to be. <laughs> so, we're gonna have a nice big tank that uh, totals up to be the same as these. So, we want a total of 188 kiloliters times 3. And we will obviously want some insulation. But it's just doing a transfer burn, so it doesn't have to... We've put insulation on the stages that need it. This stage doesn't technically need it. Um, but we want total volume of 564. Uh, you know what, just to get the same physical size, I'll make it big and reduce the utilization. And, well, that'll be enough to transfer us. It's a little bit heavier than I was looking for. Uh, that's probably because of the utilization being bad. You know what? Okay, fine. I won't reduce the utilization. We'll just make it a smaller tank then. I mean, that's a really bad dry mass to wet mass ratio. That's ridiculously bad. I mean, one-third? Let's try the lithium tank. That's a little bit better. I think we'll go with this. Yeah, one-third was really rough. And that's not even including the uh, engine mass. Okay, now can SLS do it? So we've dumped EUS. I'm adding a structural part at the bottom to cover up the dome at the top there. That's a little bit of extra mass. Oh, when I say a little bit of extra mass, apparently 5.5 tons. Um, no. <laughs> I feel like that's too much. Uh, why don't we just put a tank there? Which somehow the tanks are lighter than the structural part. See, there's 3.5 tons. I'll take the 3.5 tons, thank you. Okay, well, it's not immediately clear that we have improved our situation enough in terms of delta V. I mean, we've got 8,800 here now. That's not normally what I would estimate to get into low Earth orbit, but the situation is complicated. We will have to try it out, I think, and see how close we are. So, with that being the idea, let's take it outside. Okay, well, we don't have much structure out here on pad 39B, but at least the rocket didn't shake itself to pieces, throttling up. Oh, uh, we might as well line up with the moon. That might be a good thing. With our luck, it's probably gonna be night time for the launch.
Oh, no, I think we can go now. Okay, good. We've got a little bit of boil off, but I think we can correct the... Well, I don't know if it would hurt our efficiency to correct. Which would be worse, the boil off or trying to correct the 11 degrees on launch? I think correct, trying to correct the 11 degrees is worse than the boil off at this rate. And ignition. We're sort of off to the side there. But we'll ignore that. Launch. One reason our Delta V reading is complicated is because of the launch escape system. It's it's a fair amount of mass that we shed when we get rid of that, so. Another reason is the thrust curve on the boosters. So that 8,800 might not be quite right because of the way the boosters work. And booster set. And launch escape system jettison. Hopefully that's the right air cap. All right. Our Delta V situation right now is looking a little bit worse. Because we have to keep the pitch up. Perhaps we should go steeper with the boosters. We could lighten up on this um, structural bit here. And maybe those fairings could be lighter. I set them back to their full mass, so... And they're fairly large. All right, separation and ignition of the nuclear engine. Anytime we could jettison the fairings might be good. Maybe we should just have, uh, I mean, they were going to let go of the fairings around the service module of Orion at some point, like during this stage or during the EUS. So maybe Let's see if it helps anything. I mean, we've got a sort of straight stack. We could imagine the engines tucked into that instead and uh, that bit actually being at the bottom of this stage. And that would be good enough. All right, so, well, 3024, it's not bad. It's not too far off. And again, if we optimize our trajectory, uh, maybe lighten up that one structural bit and we it seems like we will have to dump those fairings at that point. Uh, we could probably make it work. Let's play it out and see what happens. Okay, despite the insulation I put on the upper stages, we are experiencing boil off on those as well as on this. So this, in this case, this was expected. Lower boil off is probably necessary for this mission to work out with all the hydrolocks and, well, even the nuclear stage, so go. Well, I forgot the run-up time on this engine. Shoot. We may be carrying too much MMH and Mon 3 in the, the ascent stage up there. Might be useful to actually use the RCS on that. So we'll need some of the Centaurish stage to finish this, but that might not be a problem as long as we can keep the boil off under control. And remember, the dry mass of this nuclear stage is atrocious. If they care to make a better one, I mean, there's definitely room for improvement on it. Its uh, dry mass is close to one third or 30% of its um, total mass, so, and that's not including the engine. Certainly, if I made it a balloon tank, that'd make it easier, but I'm not doing that. It's a normal integrated structural tank, not a balloon tank. We've already got a balloon tank up there in the Centaurish stage. Hmm, uh, one problem is that I think uh, the Orion service module had a oxygen generator. Yeah, we're not carrying quite enough supplies. Oh, I, I didn't mean to have six crew. We should be having four crew, and we need the oxygen generator from the but the, the boil off should provide oxygen so 
but we seem to be using more than we are gaining from the boil off. This is complicated. Uh, well, we might not be coming back this time. <laughs> I didn't mean to have six crew. Go ahead with this engine. It is uh, two engines even though it looks like one engine, so. And uh, this is based on the CC high, so it has throttling. That's the common extensible cryogenic engine, which is a variant of the RL-10. Okay, so we have a transfer. And we would really like to get there faster. All oh, right, we need the... Let's use some of the RCS on this stage instead. So our... Translunar injection mass, as it turns out, we managed 59.8 tons with this setup. Now, we've got a supply problem, though. Oxygen supply. But that's apparent. And the boil-off might help, but then I don't want the boil-off. <laughs> um, hmm. I've got a time warp in the tracking station, and... Or I could, uh, you know what, I'm just going to put the oxygen in. Let me just edit the file, Put this uh, just for the purpose of the test. I'm just going to put the rest of the oxygen in, and that should be enough to at least make a landing and then get back into orbit around the moon to demonstrate that that works, but they won't be able to come back. Incidentally, the food, water, and oxygen mass is trivial as far as the, the delta V considerations are concerned. Not anything like... You know, the structural mass of certain bits like the fuel tanks for the, the fuel tank for the nuclear engine or that little structural bit that we added to the first stage. So it the food, water, and oxygen is not going to be a major factor in our calculations. But yeah, let me just uh, give enough oxygen so that we can get there. We have still experienced some boil off, but it looks like our oxygen boil off has stopped. So maybe that was just some initial issue. Well, I can't figure out where the moon is anymore. But okay, let's just ignite. We actually have more than enough delta V in this stage. But that's probably for the best, especially if we want a more accurate landing at a location. We haven't lost a whole lot in this stage. That's good. We haven't lost anything really. Um, but we've lost everything in this procedural tank. I forgot to put... Oh, that's why we had boil off. Ah, shucks. We had boil off because this procedural tank I had here did not have MLI layers. That explains it. The rest of the tanks had MLI layers. I forgot this additional procedural tank that I put in. Hmm. But that means all the Delta V along the way, because... Uh, uh, we shouldn't have had this much delta V in this stage because it should be carrying that fuel. But that fuel was diminished after the transfer, so um, the transfer, all of that was fine. It's just that we lost this delta, uh, lost this fuel, so this shouldn't have quite as much delta V. But um, we, well, we could send the fuel back up, I suppose. Let's see. But uh, maybe I should do that after we start the landing, because <laughs> it's got to boil off again. Yeah, okay, uh, let's just put it back in here for now. Yeah, so we should have more fuel. We let it boil off. But we'll try it anyway and transfer the fuel. We'll need somewhat of a suicide burn situation, though. So what I'm going to do is do the initial descent with the RCS and not that RCS. But we'll let that turn. We'll do it with the lander stage RCS. We're carrying way too much MMH and uh, MMH and Mon3. The terrain is very dark. I feel like it probably ought not to be this dark. <laughs> uh, we're in daylight. I might want to go back to tracking station. Oh, it disappeared and... Uh, yeah, it was there and then disappeared. Something's gone weird with, like, scatterer or something. Okay, well, we have a descent path. Um, let me try and get the moon back. Uh, maybe I'll have to restart the game. We'll see. Okay, just going to the space center and coming back worked to get 
the moon back. So here we are. We've got a suicide burn countdown in theory. So I'm going to transfer the fuel up. And then we'll deal with whatever we have to deal with. Well, here we go. The terrain is not particularly inviting either. Well, that's a smoother area up ahead there. Maybe that'll work out. It's not been a bad descent trajectory, actually. I've held it at retrograde the whole time. So, on the bright side, we had the right timing for this retro burn. This was pretty much spot on as far as what I wanted. Okay, and separation. Separation. Pretty much perfect. I mean, even the separation, we hit the suicide burn countdown pretty well. This might be sort of mathematically the most perfect descent I've done on the moon. At least this throttles, unlike the AJ 10190s I did with the Apollo one. Uh, a little bit hard. We're landing a little bit hard. Ah! Ooh. Okay. Ah, I didn't want to use an ignition. Oh, we're bouncing, we're bouncing. It's okay, we've got a wide landing base. Good. Okay. Actually, I'd like to use up the RCS if possible. Alright, we've landed. Alright, so, pause. That suicide burn countdown is totally wrong. <laughs> it was bad to rely on that 2.6 seconds. Where, did that, where does that come from, huh? Okay. So, yeah, let's just get back to orbit and we need to verify that we end up with more than 850 meters per second. That's how much we need to get back home. Uh, unfortunately, again, we don't have the food, water, and oxygen because we have too much crew. So, yeah, we are not going to actually go back home because I want to avoid killing Kerbals. But we will at least verify the Delta V situation. Given that we are actually in a bad state, we're having all that boil off because I didn't put the emulators on that tank. So here we go. Whoop. I really didn't want to double clutch there. Gosh, do I have... Uh, I keep using too many ignitions on those, but they still have enough. 28 tons still. It's not light. So there are a lot of things I would like to fix, of course. Uh, starting with how much MMH and NTO we have here, the installation, etc, etc, etc. But, um, well, once I press record, I present what I did. So here we are. And this was my first test of this. I wanted to give you the first look at it. I didn't know what was going to happen. You didn't know what was going to happen. <laughs> so that's how it is. I believe in suspense. So I think that this setup works, which is quite amazing. I mean, when you think about it, Nova had to be much heavier because uh, the upper stages, everything has to do with the payload, right? If the payload is less efficient, it has huge ramifications all the way down. Of course, if the transfer stage is also inefficient, and here we were using Nerva, that also has ramifications. So yeah, we're well, Timberwind 45 in this case. So yeah. There is a place for nuclear engines, ideally to replace EUS. Afterwards, it's possible for the nuclear stage. We could have had the nuclear stage go on a trajectory that flies, uh, provided that it actually flew by the moon, uh, flies by the moon and exits out. We could have it just, I mean, it would be nice if it was not too expensive a nuclear stage. That's a caveat. But given a not too expensive nuclear stage, we could have it head out into interplanetary space and dispose of it like that. There's plenty of radiation out there, it's, it'll be home. <laughs> it, it will not be out of place in interplanetary space. Okay, and we are in orbit, and we do have enough to return back to Earth. 950 meters per second should be enough. Uh, given, well, at least the, maybe, 
Well, no, I mean, I think we can get back. Well, let's plot it. Uh, the thing is, we have this weird inclination, which makes me nervous, that's all. Okay, there, we're crashing into Earth, so surely that would bring us back. So yes, we do have enough. And so it would work. It would work. Um, NASA, balls in your court. So with that, I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.